Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Cyber Monday, November 26th, Market Watchers Live show with your host, Tom Boley and Aaron Swenlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for our regulars, welcome back. Well, uh, the market's gotten off to a pretty good start this week. We got the Dow Jones Industrial Average currently up 292 points, the S&P 500 up just over 30 points, the NASDAQ up 97, and the Russell 2000 up 13 points. The 10-year Treasury yield bouncing off of support and uh, currently up about two basis points, 3.07%. Volatility declining, moving back down just a little bit below that 20 level. Still elevated, though. Want to watch 16, 17 support to the downside. We're still quite a bit above that. Financials leading the action today, up almost 2% today, or actually maybe a little over 2%. Uh, the XLF, you can see, currently back up near that 26 and a half level. Communication services also having a pretty strong day, up 1.8%. Energy bouncing, thankfully. Uh, we've seen crude oil down quite a bit over the past seven or eight weeks, and it has taken energy stocks with it. As you can see, the XLE up about 78 back in early October, all the way back into the mid-60s now. This is a pretty key support area, though, on the XLE going back throughout 2018, so we'll want to watch that. To the upside, couple of leaders on the S&P 500, Newell Brands up more than 7%. General Motors moving, uh, I think, to its highest level since back in July, currently up 6%. General Motors having a great day, but the other general, General Electric, this is probably one of the few stocks in the market where crude oil traders are looking and saying, wow, I'm glad we ha have crude oil instead of General Electric. Uh, this has been a really rough ride, continues on GE down another 2.5% today, but you can see there's just been very, very little relief to the downside for GE shareholders. Aaron, it is Monday, it is Cyber Monday, and yes. Mateo, great Thanksgiving holiday on my end. How about you? Oh, it was fabulous. We really enjoyed ourselves. Uh, I even had two hockey games to go to, so that was great. And uh, I believe, we, yeah, we actually did win both of those home games. <laughs> so hasn't been quite the season that uh, we had hoped, but we're not out of it, so that's that's okay. Yeah, there's a long way to go in the hockey season. I think it ends around uh, July 4th, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's yeah. it's the best for hockey fans. We we just really get to OD on it. <laughs> yeah, I never have quite understood hockey finishing in the middle of the summer and baseball finishing in the winter or almost in the winter. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. To right? Me. I totally agree with you. That's just the way it is. And then football, which is, a you know, most people think of football as being a, a winter sport. And they always put the Super Bowl in some beautiful destination where it's 85 degrees and sunny. I, I don't know. I'm <laughs> going down the wrong path here today. But anyhow, I know we got a busy, busy day. It's nice right. to be back from the holidays. What we got today? All right. Yeah. And, it, uh, and the markets are looking decent as well. So that's kind of a nice uh, warming welcome for the week. All right, so what do we got going on? Well, of course, today is Cyber Monday, as you said, Tom. And I know I'm going to be out there after the show shopping, but we have at Stock Charts an amazing Cyber Monday deal. So if you renew for 12 months, you're going to get three months added on. And if you renew for six months, you're going to get an extra month. So excellent deal. And, and no worries if you're a new subscriber, just go on in, get our trial and then you can take advantage. But remember guys, seriously, only today. And, and I mean that, they, they truly will not honor Cyber Monday <laughs> specials past today. So get in there and do it. All right, the rest of the schedule though, also important, gap trading strategies. Tom is gonna do that tomorrow. And then we have uh, Mark Chaikin coming in on Wednesday. I know he's gonna be talking about the FANG stocks. And our seasonality report is going to be Thursday. So lots of information to get this week as we close off November. Monday setups for today, we're going to start off with those after the technical news. Earning spotlight will be after that. Uh, which charts will Tom annotate? We'll put your, your requests in the chat room. But our first one is going to be CVS. So you can go take a look at that chart. And then we will finish up with the decision point report. So let's go ahead, Tom, and get it started. I know we have lots of stuff to cover today. And it is a good day, finally. Yeah, we got lots of stuff to cover. Uh, unfortunately, not a whole lot of economic or earnings reports uh, out today. So we're just going to jump right on into the Treasury yield here, take a look at what's going on. And I marked a couple of levels. You can see the thicker lines. Uh, for me, these are maybe uh, more significant from an intermediate to longer term uh, perspective. 
You can see that that 3.11% level, uh, which we had a double top, we broke above that. Uh, that was a seven-year high on the 10-year Treasury yield. Came back down. It really didn't offer up a whole lot of support. Uh, we went a little bit below it, came back up above it, and now we're back down again below it. Um, I do want to mention, though, from an intermediate term perspective, you can see from these red arrows, all the tops that we've had previously, just above 3%, 3 to about 3.02%. And notice that the pullback we had in September held this level. Uh, at the end of October, we got down to about 305, 306, didn't quite get back down there. And then on Friday, uh, we moved down and we closed uh, or we tested that 3.025 area before bouncing today. So I don't know, from an intermediate term perspective, I would want to hold this level because if we don't, you know, I was looking at what the next level would be. And obviously, we could go all the way down to these lows down closer to 2.81%. But I think uh, if you look at this line around 2.925%, you'll see that there are quite a few uh, intersections of that level, um, either both on the support side and resistance side, where we've seen uh, the 10-year uh, Treasury yield pivot in one direction or the other. Uh, but still, if we were to break below 3% and head in that direction, what that's telling us is that more and more money is rotating into Treasuries. That's what causes that yield to go lower is the, the buying of Treasuries. And the buying of Treasuries is very defensive. So if we see that, I'm going to be much more bearish equities than I am if we bounce. I know there's a lot of folks worried about it, higher interest rates, but as I've said before, I'd rather deal with slightly higher interest rates in a very low interest rate environment historically than to see these yields start dropping again. I don't think that would be a very good sign. I think that would be a message to the Fed that things are really beginning to slow down, uh, at least uh, not nearly as hot as the Fed would have us believe. So a lot of stuff going on there, but I would watch in the near term this 3 to 3.02%. I'd like to see this hold and move back up through that 3.11%, but we'll see. All right, uh, let's take a look at a couple of things in the market. First of all, the S&P 500, I thought I would take a look here and just show you, this is a, a four-month uh, hourly chart. And typically, when you're, you're moving lower like we were back in October, that was a clear downtrend. And you can see that many tests of this green line, which is your 20-hour EMA, failed and we continue dropping. We had one little period here in the middle of the month where we went above, bounced off of it, moved higher, and then we fell back down again. Um, but for the most part in that downtrend, that 20 hour EMA was holding as resistance. We got into the uptrend and with an exception of this one test of the top of gap support, which came a little bit below the 20 hour EMA, you can see that that was holding as support on the way up. Then we came back down a, a couple of weeks ago you can see each one of these tests of that 20 hour uh, failed. We kept moving lower, got back up above the 20, but it wasn't a very uh, convincing move, obviously. We came right back down below the 20. We've been struggling below. Now today we moved up through it and we've pulled back. And I just want to make sure I have the late, latest. Uh, yeah, we're at 2665. So, so far we're holding what is now a rising 20 hour EMA. The only reason I bring this up is sometimes, you know, moving averages are great when you're in a trend. Moving averages can be very frustrating if you're in sideways consolidation, because what you'll see is while we're consolidating, we saw some of this back in September when we kept going sideways, or even in over the summer, July, August, when we were going sideways. You see how we would move through the 20 hour, come back down below, move above, come back down below, above, below. You know, you can kind of get that sense that the market was somewhat directionless back at that particular point in time. So the 20-hour EMA really was not providing as much support or resistance. And I think now that we've seen this latest decline and now we're moving back up above, what I don't want to see is what we had about a week ago or a little over a week ago where we got above the 20 but really couldn't sustain that move. And then right back down we go. Today we got a nice gap up. We're in a very bullish histor historical period right now uh, that carries us through about the first week, through the end of the first week of December. And so breaking out above the 20 hour is great, but I want to see it hold. And so on periods of weakness today, or maybe over the next couple of days, we need to be watching for that. I think it would be very easy for the market because we do have a positive divergence. I'm going to shorten this. Uh, I think it would be very easy for the market to just take a very quick move to the upside and then resume its move to the downside. So if I annotate this, what I'm referring to, first of all, you can see that there's pretty good 
Um, there was gap support here. We held. Then we broke down, gapped below. And now getting back up, we could be in the process of filling this gap. And that also would line up pretty significantly with the uh, positive divergence that we had out there. Uh, you can see that the uh, PPO was higher as prices moved lower last week. So at the end of the last week, we had put in a lower low, but you can see the PPO is higher. A lot of times that will lead to a 50 period test, which just so happens to coincide with this overhead resistance and gap resistance. So I think 2680 to 2690, and I'm going to say 2690 because of that gap resistance in here, but right there, I think this is going to be really key short-term area. As If we can continue trending up, hold that rising 20-day moving average and break above, then I think short-term the market starts to turn a little bit more bullish, especially being in this historical bullish period that we're in. But if we fail there, turn back down, fail to hold that rising 20-day, then I think best case scenario for the bulls is that we just go sideways. Worst case is that we go back and we break below the uh, January, February lows that we saw back then. So just a few things to think about from a short-term uh, perspective. Um, uh, let's take a look at, um, oh, let's see. Well, here was a long, I'm going to give you a longer term approach to the S and P 500. I wrote about this in my blog today, talking about a couple of ingredients of a bear market. We do have a couple, one being the volatility index still being elevated up above 16, 17 past two bear markets. Once we've gone through those levels, we have not pulled back beneath 16 on that volatility index. And that's important because in a bear market, you need fear. And so that fear meter needs to stay somewhat elevated. When we get bounces, the VIX, when it comes down, needs to hold that 16, 17 if you're in that bear market camp. The other thing that uh, is, is, needs to be pointed out is the weekly PPO has gone negative. Now, we have seen this during corrections, but if you're going to get a bear market like we had 2007 to 2009, you have to have a negative PPO, weekly PPO. You can't have a bear market without negative momentum. And so we have now moved into negative territory. And the question is, is it going to be like it's been you know, the last three times where we've just had corrections? Or is it going to be more like this where we had the bear market? I would watch that February low. I still believe that that is the key uh, going forward. I think if we can hold on to the February low, continue to consolidate, I think the market could resume its bull market that we've seen and that we've been in this channel now for the last nine years. If not, if we break that channel, break that price support, then I think we've got more problems ahead. All right, Aaron, a uh, number of upgrades, downgrades, what you got for today? All righty, let's take a peek. Yeah, it was really interesting. Not that many, lately it's been a lot of downgrades with very few upgrades. And today was actually a plethora of upgrades and very few downgrades, interestingly enough. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get started with the first ones that we have. So of the upgrades, I'm going to first look at American Eagle Outfitters, AEO. Uh, I tried to pick the ones that had somewhat interesting charts to go from. Uh, what I found interesting about this chart was the positive divergence between the PMO bottoms and the price bottoms, which gives me the indication with as well as this PMO turning up here in oversold territory, I'm expecting a move higher. The difficult part is gonna be $21. Uh, you need to get above that and it was in October, so there is a lot of memory by investors as to where it was. So I'd be watching that $21 level. If we get past that, I think this one could run. The next one, Tableau Software was upgraded today. And as you can see, we've got the um, PMO has now turned up above the signal line. So I think that is very, very positive to see. Uh, and you, you've got, you know, rather difficult price action here, really volatile. But we did bounce off that 200-day EMA. And looking in the thumbnail, you know, we're finally above that 20 uh, the 50, I'm sorry, and then the 20, but you can see the five is just crossed above the 20 day EMA. And if that holds today, that would be a short term trend model buy signal uh, for decision point. So keep an eye on, on data, D A T A, Tableau software. GameStop. There we go. This one was also upgraded today. And I thought what was really interesting with this chart is you can see these lows that we had back in earlier October. And we're, 
we've pierced that. We've managed to get above that. Now we just need to keep, uh, <clears throat> we need to get that close to stay above 1450, to stay above this level here that we saw as uh, resistor, which we're seeing as resistance right now. So I'd be watching that. We can see that we have gone uh, holding 20 day EMA and now we have gone above that 50. So I think that's positive on this upgrade for GameStop. Intuit was also upgraded today. This one I thought was interesting and in that we do have a possible uh, positive divergence lining up on the PMO. You have these uh, lower price bottoms here, right there. And you can see if we get this PMO to turn right up, if we can get it to turn up over the next day or two, that would give us the positive divergence as the PMO bottoms would be rising. But I can't call it a positive divergence yet because we don't have a PMO bottom yet. So it's shaping up to look like we might see something like that on Intuit. So uh, good to see some of these technology stocks showing up on the upgrades instead of the downgrade list. All right, Regions Financial uh, was upgraded today. This one has a really interesting chart pattern here. And I think uh, most of you looking at this probably recognize it. We had a really deep decline that started back in September and we continued lower, managed to find a bottom in October, uh, made a, another run, but couldn't get above the 200 day EMA and have fallen back. Uh, well, with price action today, it looks like we're going to form a second bottom to a possible double bottom formation. And this would be a great one if it does uh, pan out. Uh, it won't actually be a double bottom formation until we get a breakout above that, what would be considered the confirmation line all the way up here near $18. Uh, but this one could be lining up for that. And the length of this pattern being as large as it is, uh, if we get that breakout and confirmation, you would add the height of this to the breakout point as your possible upside target. And that would put us pretty much right back here at these highs we saw back in March and September. So and actually above that, if we did the actual uh, addition, I think of this uh, to add to the top of this pattern. So I thought this one looked pretty good. And you can see that the PMO does have rising bottoms at this point. Uh, there were rising bottoms on price. So that is a uh, confirmation of that of that bullish uh, activity there. So we have the break above the five day EMA, which we haven't seen since we had that big decline. So I think this one might be inching upward regions financial. Exxon Mobil was also upgraded today. Uh, this one trying to get that second PMO bottom as well as we saw like uh, on, that, on, on the previous chart, we wanna see that PMO bottom right here because that would give us a positive divergence on the price bottoms. but. Again, we don't have it quite yet. We have to wait for it to turn up before we can actually call that a positive divergence, but it does look like we're lining up for one uh, on Exxon. And we held this area of support here, right in that $76 range. Uh, you know, oil has still got a lot of downward pressure and I would expect to see that from Exxon Mobil as well. Uh, so, you know, keep an eye on this one, but you can see very volatile and we know oil prices have been um, volatile. Uh, and I do see more downward pressure on oil, which you'll, you'll be uh, hearing about later in the program when I do my decision point report. All right, so other upgrades that uh, I'm, I did not go over, AT&T was upgraded, Schwab was upgraded, Scana Corp, SCG was upgraded, Schlumberger was upgraded today, Cognizant Technology, CTSH was upgraded, and Novartis was also upgraded today, NVS. All right, let's go ahead and look at a one downgrade and then we'll move on to our Monday setups. All right, uh, the one downgrade I wanted to show you was Nissan Motor and they have of course been in the news with their CEO, I guess uh, has been fired, being fired. There's all kinds of uh, interesting information going on in the news media about Nissan. It is trying to make a move back up um, but it did get downgraded today and you can see some pretty serious resistance here at that 1750 level. Uh, PMO is trying to turn up though. And if it does, that would line up with a positive divergence, but uh, I'm not holding my breath here with Nissan. A little too much uh, in the news arena that I don't wanna get involved in 
in uh, rumors and all of that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't be into this. Maybe if it, it busted above that 1750 area, finished closing this gap, um, eh, maybe talk to me then. But at this point, I'm not seeing enough uh, positive going on here. So that's all I had for our upgrades and downgrades. Other downgrades I didn't cover, uh, Eli Lilly, uh, Eris was uh, upgraded. Uh, Southern Copper, we looked at that. That was actually upgraded on Friday or last week, and it was downgraded today. Very interesting. And Kinder Morgan also downgraded today. All right, Tom, time to get into those Monday setups and see how we did last week. I had my first short in a long time. I and know. And it was, going, it was going well for you. And I know when I did my short a few weeks ago, it did pretty well. So maybe we should just be doing shorts. Yeah, maybe so. Although today, uh, you know, it's a good day. And of course, that that made me take a little bit of a hit on that short. But let's go ahead and take a peek at these. And then I'll give you what I'm looking at now. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, so we wanted to look at LNC. Let's go over there. And this was mine. It was a short uh, let's see, I'm not, I can't remember what we got it at, but it was, I was up here. Uh, and so we did end up with a nice move to the downside on a short, but of course today I'm getting a, a two and, uh, you know, third percent rise on that short. So that, that's not so good, but, you know, honestly, if you were still holding it as a short, I would still consider it, uh, just because we haven't gotten above the 20 and the 6250 area, uh, could be interesting resistance. So it might, might be able to hold that and continue lower, but no, uh, oh, no, no, that did all right. And what did you have? Uh, Etsy, E T S Y. Oh, right. That was oh my gosh, that was all those uh, a long, long time ago. <laughs> we did that yep. one. Well, this one I went the opposite way for me. I actually went down last week uh, when the market was selling off. Obviously, the market got mm -hmm. hit pretty good, but uh, it has come back pretty nicely, and it is back up above. Uh, where it was, I guess, last week when we discussed it. If I didn't own it, but if I had, I probably would have gotten stopped out. I got stopped out a few positions last week. So, um, but yeah, I guess if we're still going Monday to Monday, that's that's uh, hurt me some weeks. If yeah. I have to hold the entire week, well, this week I guess it helped me. Um, you know, the stock bounced back, yep. and this is up like two percent or something like that from where it was a week ago. Yeah, I like the PMO. I would be holding. I'd be continuing to hold it at this point. Yeah, I like the stock. I mean, it gapped up with very strong earnings. That was just uh, earlier in November. And it's really a continuation of what we've seen from this stock over the really all of 2018. It's been a pretty nice ride up for shareholders of Etsy. And I would expect, well, depending on the market, obviously. I mean, the market last week when it was weak, you saw Etsy going down. But if the market does get its feet under it and we do have a bullish um, you know, few weeks heading into the end of the year, I could definitely see this stock make another run back up into the 50s. All right. Excellent. Okay. Right. What, Only what as good as our last, right? Yep. What do you got for this week? All right. I did run a scan today. I ran uh, my five day crossover, EMA crossover scan. Uh, I could put this in, uh, but I did end up, it's a five day crossover scan, but I, I ended up commenting that part out. And I did comment out um, an extra day of the PMO rising. So I couldn't, I didn't get any hits on my regular scans uh, without having to manipulate them. So that does tell me a little bit that generally I don't want to get into the market when I'm having difficulty finding uh, results on my scans. But once I manipulated it a little bit, I got about 40, 40 out of it. And these were the ones that I so let's go ahead and look at our Monday setups right here. All right, uh, Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. This is the first one I'm gonna lay out for you. I like the price action here as far as holding that 200 day EMA, you know, poke down there, uh, but it's now heading back up. Uh, you know, the $14 range could pose a bit of a problem here if you look at where it lines up with a lot of these tops and especially lows here, uh, right here from August. So I didn't make that this my pick just because that looks like pretty strong overhead resistance and I didn't wanna have to, um, well, I didn't wanna have to fight that uh, 
for this for the Monday setups. But I think for a, a little bit longer term setup, I think it still looks pretty good. And I, I didn't do a line chart, but you can see a very small double pot, bottom here set up. Uh, so I like to see that. And of course, the PMO is now on a buy signal. So this one I think looks pretty good. If you get the, um, you know, if the pattern does connect here, let's see, 11.75, let's say 13.75, about $2, a little less than $2. So 1550, uh, around 1525, that's the upside target if we look at this very small double bottom. I think you could even make a case for the shape, shaping up to maybe another one with these rounded uh, bottom bottoms. But Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals, I thought looked good. Blackstone Group, uh, this one I almost picked, but it's already, I didn't wanna chase it. Um, but I think this one's looking really good right now. Uh, only issue I have with it is that $35 area of resistance that lines up right here, back from that February top. Uh, but you can see it, it also was the top of some consolidation that we saw earlier. Uh, but this is a really nice double bottom pattern that we're coming into. And it's a, a nice uh, tall pattern. So if we do get confirmation, uh, that pattern, the length of that pattern added to the breakout point would certainly take us above that September high. So I think uh, BX Blackstone Group looks good. And you can see the PMO buy signal coming back in here to play. PTC Therapeutics was another one I had. Alrighty, and this one, nice rounded bottom going on here. It did get above the 200 day EMA, but currently it is trading below it, <clears throat> but above that top I see here at that $34 range. So I wanna see it hold $34. The PMO buy signal should stay there um, unless we, we fall below that 34, but I think we're gonna be able to hold on to that buy signal. And you know the 200 day EMA would be my only issue here as far as it, um, you know, I'd like to see it close above that. Uh, but I thought uh, PTCT looked pretty good. I have two more and then my pick, Boingo Wireless. Uh, this one I didn't pick, but, you know, mainly because I just don't like these sort of chart patterns. This looks like a reverse flag, sort of. It's kind of long in the tooth uh, as far as the flag would go. But I just didn't like the look of the pattern that much. Um, but it did come up in my scan and the PMO is turning up in oversold territory, I'd want to see that that uh, buy signal and I'd keep it on a watch list and look for that $26 level uh, to be broken. I'd like to see a close above $26. Wolverine Worldwide, www. And this one has a buy signal, so I like that. We were getting, we got the penetration above the 200 day EMA. Currently trading above it, would like to close above it. Uh, to, to, before I'd get in, but uh, buy signals intact here. And like I said, I like the, the bump above the 200 day EMA. Looks like it could make a run a bit higher, but the one I chose this week is Wayfair Incorporated. And I liked this one for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, I like the breakout from this longer term uh, declining tops trend line. Uh, we haven't been able to do that. We have gone above the five-day EMA. This would be its third day trading above the five-day EMA if we get the close as well. Almost have the buy signal. Don't quite have it yet, uh, but I kind of like to see that. At this point, honestly, I picked it for a very short-term trade. Excuse me. I, I picked it for a very short-term trade in that I'm looking for it to go to that $100 area and I don't think it's gonna pull back that far. So I went ahead and set a stop on this at about $85, because I'm looking here in the thumbnail, and that would take it below these lows here, but it wouldn't bring it all the way down to some of these closes we had previously. And that would be just so I could kind of cover myself on a, on a really short-term trade. I'd be looking for a move to $100, in which case, you know, that would be a pretty nice little, uh, uh, you know, a nice little sum to to pick up in a week if if Wayfair does what it, I think it will do. So, all right. Well, uh, you do have it on there. It's bought at ninety one sixty two, but you're showing the last trade at ninety and a quarter. So I think you get the ninety and a quarter level. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and annotate that now. <laughs> a little bonus in there. Yep. There you go. 
All right, I am going to just start right out with what I'm going with today, there this week, and it is going to be a pretty aggressive pick, um, but hey, that's what I like to do. Uh, I'm going to go with Health Insurance Innovations, HIIQ. This is a stock that has been in the ski slope mode um, off of the early October high, like many higher growth uh, stocks. Uh, the company's done a lot of uh, uh you know, really good things in, tor in uh, terms of posting its revenues and earnings. It's been a very, very fast grower, but uh, those types of stocks have really gotten hit hard over the past uh, two months. And you can see in the chart, the stock has been straight down. Volume's been pretty heavy. And you might say, well, why now? Why pick it here? Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to go with the 3355, which is the current. Actually, let me get a uh, let me get an update. Make sure I have the most recent. Yep, 33.55 is the last trade, so I'm going to take it here. Uh, there's a couple reasons why I like the stock. Number one, if we look at the uh, inspector, the gap, uh, these two major gap ups that occurred back in August, early August, uh, started from a close of 33 and 33.25. Well, we went all the way up to 62, 63, and now we've come all the way back within 30 cents of that gap support level right here at 33 and a quarter. We're sitting at 33.55. We went below it intraday, put in a lower low, and now we're trying to bounce off of it. Of course, this is an intraday. We don't know. I mean, stock could be at the at the low of the day by the end of the day. But I do like the fact that we did go down and we tested that gap support finally. And the other thing I like about the stock is if we pull up an hourly chart, um, it just seems like the sellers, it's starting to run out of sellers. You can see the volume was extremely heavy on the selling back in early November. Then we bounced lighter volume. And then as we picked up with this selling, you can see the volume picking up again. We bounced one more time. And on the low today earlier, you can see that the volume, I don't know, to me, it just seems like the volume, the past, the selling, you know, when we see the red bars, the, the volume has been much lighter of late. So I think we could be running out of sellers. The other thing I like here is that with these lower prices, you can see the hourly PPO is higher. So we have a positive divergence on the 60 minute chart, which tells me that the momentum to the downside is slowing. And that happens to be occurring at the same time that we're testing gap support on the daily chart um, and also um, trying to reverse off of that. I can get the chart up here for you, there you go. So you can see that, that there's that gap support, there's the move below, and with that positive divergence on the 60 minute chart, I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'll tell you though, this is a fast mover. And if the market does well and you get a quick pop here and I, I could see 10 to 15%, I would take it. The daily PPO is very negative. Anything back up into the 37, 38, 39 area uh, is likely to be met with some pretty significant resistance. Um, the stock is at 33. You could use today's low as a stop if you'd like. Um, but I would be looking for a bounce. I think the, the market is in this time period where we tend to see bounces and I could see a nice little rally here on HIIQ. So that's going to be my pick for this week. So what else do I like? Uh, well, HMSY, uh, this one's coming back down, testing the 20 day. Also the breakout occurred at about 34. So it's getting close to support there. Uh, PayPal, this is the one I, I put in my uh, blog article from this morning. The only reason I didn't go with it is I think it can run to the 20 day and it's already up 2.8% today. So I just, after today's gap, I just don't think the reward to risk is there on PayPal, but I do like the stock anytime it drops back down into the mid seventies. Uh, SCS, which is a steel case. You see the gap support here, big gap up heavy volume back in September. We've worked our way all the way back down and we are testing key area of gap support. HZNP. Um, need to get one more letter on there. HZNP. The breakout occurred at about 21. You can see we came back down from a high near 23 and a half. Testing the rising 20-day moving average. This is a pretty good area on a pullback. MNK. This is a pharma. Big gap up here with earnings. Actually, uh, the fact that it's now moved down below that low makes me a little nervous. I think this 25, 26 area is where I would like to see it turn. Well, I definitely want to see it turn. Um, but I was thinking maybe it might hold that tail from the last earnings report right here where it gaps up, comes down to about 26 and the buyers show up. Well, we've taken that out to the downside, but I definitely do not want to close below 25. VCYT, this is Verisite. 
Big move up, heavy volume, pulls back. This might have been on my setups from last week. Um, now I'm looking at them. I don't see it on here. Uh, but anyway, 12 and a half, you can see, was a breakout level on very heavy volume. Going back, we're a little below the 20 day, but we're just, you know, we're pretty close to that breakout area. The stock two or three weeks ago was up 15 and a half. I wouldn't be surprised to see a pop here. And then the last one I have is Costco. COST, uh, the stock had been pulling back quite a bit here in November, at least the last few weeks. Uh, but we are at a major support level, about 217, 218. Stock currently trading at 220. Gapped up earlier, has pulled back flat today, but we are pretty close to that uh, support area. So those are the setups that we had for this week. I went with HIIQ. Aaron's got Wayfair, W. And we will, I guess, start our next battle is on. Aaron. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, we are now going to go into earning spotlight. And I'm going to take a little different approach today with the earning spotlight. Uh, I like to try different approaches each uh, time. Of course, uh, John Hopkins usually joins me uh, twice a month. But the other two, I just kind of uh, wing it a little bit. And so what I want to do today is take a look at uh, relative charts of upcoming earnings, not earnings that we've already had, but these are all going to be companies that are reporting this week. Um, and I believe Buckle is the first one I'm going to take a look at. This is in the retail space. number of retailers will be reporting this week. Uh, but here's Buckle. Uh, you can see the stock uh, been downtrending since the end of August, even though the apparel retailers didn't top until earlier this month. I mean, it's been a very, very big move to the downside in the apparel retailers. On a relative basis, Buckle has held up pretty well during this selling, but because it topped all the way back in August, you can see that the relative strength, we had been under a lot of pressure to the downside since the relative high, which was all the way back in May. So on this high, that's when it hit a relative high to its peers. So I'm a little concerned. This one's got some mixed signals um, with the overall group dropping. I don't think that's a good thing. Not so much maybe for last quarter's results. I think they might be okay with that. I'm a little worried about forecast uh, based on what happened to the overall group and the fact that the stock has been downtrending on a relative basis since May. So something to think about. You know, I always talk a lot about these relative charts after the earnings come out and say, well, you know, kind of easy to see why the market, you know, is treating the stock the way it is because it was a relative laggard for so long. Well, I'm going to try and do the opposite and take a look at some of these before the earnings come out and see how uh, maybe the predictions go here. But Buckle, I do think this is a mixed chart. I would not expect a huge report. I certainly would not expect uh, significant um, uh, raised guidance going forward based on what I'm seeing here on the relative charts. Next up, salesforce.com. All right, salesforce.com has been under a lot of pressure since early October from 160 all the way down to about 113, 114 in about seven weeks. And this was one of the leaders. This is where software topped. You can see salesforce.com topped. You also can see their relative strength topped. I mean, it's one thing for software to go down and for, for CRM just to go sideways and kind of just go along for the ride. But CRM is, is significantly underperforming the overall software. So this has been a very, very big drop for CRM. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these high growth stocks are really taking it on the chin here and have been for the past two months. And it's certainly a warning sign about the market, especially if we lose major support on our uh, key um, indices. But you can see on a relative basis, not so great. This is another one where I think maybe their numbers might be okay on the surface for the last quarter, but I'm worried what they might have to say going forward. They may lower guidance. Uh, I'd be a little careful here. Next up, uh, BNS into the banking area, Bank of Nova Scotia. Uh, we know the banks have been pretty weak. There, there's the DJ USBK, the banking index, which has been declining for the most part. We topped all the way back in January. Haven't been able to break back out. Uh, Bank of Nova Scotia also topped back in January and has been working its way lower. Just last week, it actually broke to a new low, even though the index did not. And so what you've got is a stock that has been a laggard on a relative basis in a fairly weak group. So here's the stock versus the S&P, and you can see the banks versus the S&P have been weak. So wouldn't be expecting a whole lot of this report uh, either. All right, uh, Cracker Barrel. I like Cracker Barrel. 
been into Cracker Barrels. They're nice restaurants. Um, look at the move the stock has made over the past two months. I think there's some good stuff coming out in this report. Um, on a relative basis, well, first of all, you can see restaurants have done well. But on a relative basis, we are now at about a four-month high relative to an already pretty hot restaurant group. Um, that's, a, that's enabled uh, Cracker Barrel to outperform the S&P 500. And, of course, restaurants have been wildly outperforming the S&P over the past couple months. So I'd say based on the look of this chart, I wouldn't be surprised to see some raised guidance here with Cracker Barrel going forward. I think the report will be good. The real question in the near term is, is everything already baked in? No pun intended. But we've got a huge move up here. And so I think that the rumors of a strong report are probably already out there. The question is, do we see a sell-off with the news? Buy on rumor, sell on news, that old Wall Street adage. Uh, I don't know. But if we do, if we see a good report and raise guidance, what we might see is a sell on the news, but that could present a nice opportunity. So that's something I'd be looking for on CBRL. Now, I will say I don't normally trade uh, into earnings. I don't hold into earnings. And I normally don't trade the day of earnings. I like to see how a stock trades and let it settle down a little bit and then look for good entry points if I like the stock. But with something like this that's been up so, so rapidly, um, if they do come through with the news that everyone uh, is anticipating and you do get a sell-off on the news, I think that could present an opportunity for Cracker Barrel. So something to keep in mind. Uh, WB, Weibo, Weibo, I think this is an online publishing company in China. Uh, maybe something to do with social media. But anyhow, you got a big downtrend here with the stock relative to the publishers, which almost were breaking out. I mean, we weren't far from a 2018 high just a couple of weeks ago in this group, but it has been a, another big drop. And you can see relative to its peers, WB has been very weak. So I wouldn't expect a whole lot out of this earnings report. VEEV. Now, this was one of the best earnings reports last quarter that I saw, Viva Systems. And if they come out with a bad earnings report this quarter, it's going to be like the poster child for why I don't like to hold stocks long term. Because if this stock can go from that earnings report that it had back in August, where they beat on the top line by a mile, they beat on the bottom line by a mile, they raised guidance. And then if they come out three months later and, and issue a bad report, that to me would be the poster child of why I don't like to hold stocks longer term. Because if you don't get too many, you know, Apples and Amazons and uh, Netflixes, and I know those probably aren't great examples with the way they've been trading lately. But I think if you look at the long term chart, you'll understand what I mean. I mean, those companies, every time they pull back, you get more buyers. And before you know it, you're back at new highs. Most stocks aren't like that. And uh, I think this is going to be the more one of the more interesting earnings reports this week. Uh, simply because it had such a solid earnings report back in August. But look at all the selling in October as the stock went from 110 all the way back down into the low 80s. So is the run over? Well, when you look at the relative strength, I think it's holding up pretty well relative to the software stocks. The group's been going down, but on a relative basis, I mean, that it seems like it's just the fact that the group has been going down. That's what's taking... Um, VEV down. So it could be, you know, a baby being thrown out with the bathwater kind of a situation. Uh, it would not surprise me if VEV, VEEV comes out and beats uh, their earnings estimates. Now, what kind of reaction that would get? Uh, hard to say, but this will be a really interesting one. Tiffany's TIF. Uh, Tiffany's been in a downtrend for a while, but notice it's gone all the way back down and filled this gap from its earnings back in May. So it's taken six months. And I know when we get these breakouts in huge volume and nice candle, I generally say, you know, we might go back and test the top of gap support, but it's probably going to be a while before we go back to the bottom. And you can see in this case, the stock did pretty well for a while, but it has made its way all the way back down and has filled that gap now. Um, still, I'm a little leery here. You can see that the group, the specialty retailers, were trying to break out end of September, early October, and Tiffany's was not. So on a relative basis, money was rotating out of Tiffany's within specialty retailers. And so on a relative chart, you can see that uh, we've gone quite a bit down on a relative basis since the high that was reached back uh, right about here at the end of July, early August. 
So I wouldn't be surprised maybe if we see a little disappointment in the earnings report from Tiffany's. Maybe not in the, uh, the, the uh, quarter that just passed, but I'm thinking maybe with guidance. All right, the last few here. Burlington, this is going to be another one that I think is really going to be very interesting because literally just two weeks ago, Burlington in middle of November was still trading at a high. And yet the retail apparel group has completely fallen apart. And yes, that's taken Burlington down with it. But on a relative basis, Burlington's not far from a breakout relative to the group. So within this space, I do think that Burlington is one where you're getting, you know, the, the company is getting more than its fair share of money rotating in. Here is a gap support from May, right around 145. That's been holding so far. I give this one a pretty good chance of uh, delivering a good, good report. And the fact that it's gone down for the past two weeks, I think we could get a nice reaction to it as well. All of this, by the way, is just a good educated guess. Uh, I don't hold these stocks into earnings. I don't try to play that game. But it, I think it is uh, interesting to look at how these stocks are performing on a relative basis and then take a look at maybe uh, what that could mean with earnings. And we can always go back and see what uh, we actually, um, what kind of reaction we actually got. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods, here's another one. Look at this breakout or attempt at a breakout just a couple of weeks ago when the overall group specialty retailers was dropping. So what you have here is a stock that has been, uh, on a relative basis, has been gaining ground versus its peers. So in other words, money coming into specialty retailers, more of it is finding its way into Dick Sporting Goods. And that could bode well heading into its earnings report. Stock has been hit the last couple of weeks, but that could be an opportunity. And the last one I had here was uh, Dollar Tree, DLTR. Again, another specialty retailer. This is on the opposite end of the spectrum. You know, we just talked about Dick's and how that one looks pretty good on a relative basis. Well, take a look at Dollar Tree, Tree, which topped all the way back in January and has been working its way lower, even though it's been in a group where it's been seeing more than its fair share of rotation. Money has actually been coming in. You can see down here relative strength on uh, uh, specialty retailers was very, very strong into late, well, into the middle of summer. And then it's kind of drifted off since then. But back here when the money was rotating so heavily in, this stock was actually getting beaten up pretty badly. And you can see the last two uh, earnings reports, actually last three earnings reports, Dollar Tree, not good. So are we going to get another one? Based on what I'm seeing here, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you could look at the relative strength the last two months and say maybe the worst is already built in. But I don't think there's anyone poor, you know, jumping in with both feet into that Dollar Tree at this point. So I don't expect a big report at all. Uh, now, maybe they just kind of come in with a decent report. Maybe that will result in a gap up. But the overall trend here to me remains down. So let's take a look at uh, those stocks that we just went over for earnings spotlight. And while you're looking at that, I do want to mention one more time, it is Cyber Monday. And I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but I'm telling you what, you can save a lot of money today. This is the day of the year where Stock Charts has its absolute best deal on membership. And if you are a current member and you want to extend, uh, if you extend 12 months, you're going to get three additional months free. If you extend six months, you'll get one additional month free. Best deal is definitely to extend those 12 months. Get 15 for the price of 12. If you are a new member or you're contemplating becoming a new member, get the free trial. You got to do that first and then extend using the special today. And you will then qualify for <clears throat> the 15 months for 12 months special. Great deal, Aaron. Yes, absolutely. I mean, and it is the very best deal that we offer all year for real. We don't just say that. <laughs> it truly is an excellent deal. And if you're going to, you know, if you're going to be a subscriber forever, like I would hope you will be, you, the, every time we have this every year, this is the time to take advantage. So highly recommend you take a peek. All right. It is time for 10 and 10, huh? It is. Well, let's go and see what we got going on here. All righty. So I'm going to move this to the RRG, but you can see we had 24 requests today. Not as many. We usually get about 30. I've noticed that they've gone down lately, uh, interestingly. 
All right, so here's what we got as far as the RRG is concerned, and I'll just take a few tails out of here so we can see it better. Uh, obviously, a few outliers we'll, we'll probably look at, no promises. Uh, especially uh, if you have, if we've looked at it within the last week, I don't pick it just to be fair, but I will do whatever the most popular one in the chat room is, even if we looked at it uh, the day before or the show before in this case. So go ahead and put them in there, like the ones that uh, are already there and we'll see which one's most popular. So Tom, let's go ahead and get it started with CVS. All right, uh, CVS, first of all, it is a drug retailer, uh, which many of you I'm sure know. Uh, the overhead resistance is clear. It's up near $82. That was the January high. That is where we reversed. We went up, tried to get through $82, failed, put in that bearish engulfing candle, and then we came back down. I think that the this uh, candle right here, look at the volume here on this gap up and the move that took us to 82. We came all the way back down, tested that level, and now we've turned back up. So I think we're in a trading range here on CVS between you could even say 74. That's the bottom of the gap support. So I could move this down a little bit further. But let's call it 74 to the downside, 82 to the upside. You can see drug retailers have been rising, even though the market's been getting hit. This is a pretty decent area of the market. And as a result, when you look at CVS versus the S&P, you see it rising for the past three or four months. Same thing with the overall group. So the market very defensive right now looking for other areas to away from technology, away from consumer discretionary and so forth. And CVS is one of those companies that has been benefiting from that different uh, attitude in the market. But if the market were to take off or if CVS were to pull back here and fail to hold on to 74, I'd be a little bit concerned. I would expect that this is a stock that will make another run for 82. All right. The most popular in the chat room is Square. SQ. All right. Well, I mentioned PayPal earlier. That's in the financial administration space, uh, similar to Square. Um, what you're hoping on Square is that the gap down right here was an exhaustive gap off this downtrend. Nice red hollow candle, very big volume. That level needs to hold. I think that's a really important uh, level. The stock was trading at 70 in the 70s and in two days went down to 55 on very heavy volume. And that's where buyers came in. You don't want to see a move back down below $55. So I think the support is definitely in play. Uh, the question now is whether or not, number one, we can see a turn back up in the financial administration stocks, which have been so weak over the last seven or eight weeks. And then on a relative basis, can Square begin to outperform its peers? We have not been seeing that of late. So all of that tells me that right now, um, you know, like the overall market, I think you have to be very cautious with Square. I would watch this support level to the downside. And it's pretty clear to me that the area to watch to the upside is going to be that declining 20-day moving average. Also, that recent break where we saw that selling from 70 down to 55. See all these uh, short-term support uh, tests right around $70. We broke down went all the way to 55, now we're working our way back up. That 20 day moving average coincides with that 70 level. So if I was in Square, personally, I would be a seller in the upper 60s. I wanna see Square get back up through that 20 day before I would be interested from a longer term perspective. All right, let's see. The next one I have for you, our only communication services request, New York Times, NYT. Yeah, this is one actually that I liked for a while, uh, and then it pulled back. Let's see if I can get that chart. There we go. Um, yeah, I mean, it pulled all the way back to the prior low, and now it's starting to move back up again. This is another one where it's it's performed really well over the past couple of months, broke out. Um, that tells you right there you've got a relative leader. Anything breaking out in November this year um, is a relative leader. But the question is where – do you keep or where is the major support level? And I think looking back now off of this advance, we have come back on three separate occasions to 24 and a half, 24 and three quarters. I think that is clearly the support level I would watch. To the upside, the recent high just above 28. I think we're in a trading range, but in an uptrend within this trading range. So I expect that we're going to make another run for 28, 28 and a half here. All right. Sounds good. Let's see the next one I have for you in the restaurants and bars, 
Darden Restaurants, D-R-I. Yeah, I was looking at the restaurants earlier. They were taking it on the chin. Um, but this is a group that's been doing really well. So what we're seeing is some rotation, money rotating away from restaurants and bars, which have been doing so well, and then moving into areas that are just so beaten up, Look, you know, traders looking for a bounce. So I think some of that is going on here. I would be watching, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of different areas. First of all, you can see restaurants and bars been very strong, but we are getting some profit taking. On a relative basis, up to two months ago, Darden was one of the leaders. We pulled back. I'd like to see that relative strength begin to resume. But because it's even though it's been weak over the last two months on a relative basis to its peers, it's still breaking out relative to the S&P because it's part of such a strong group. The restaurants have been so strong over the past uh, eight weeks or so. So what do I want to see here? I would like to see those recent lows hold the moving average. Um, this is the high at the end of October. And then this was the high back in mid-October. So we went through that. Look at the volume coming in. On these pullbacks, we've been holding around this 109, 110 area. I'd like to see that continue to hold there. Because if we fail, where's the next? where are buyers going to come in? We'd be below the moving averages. We'd be below those price er support areas. We'd probably be looking back at another test around 103, 104. So I think that where we are sitting right now on DRI is pretty important. If we close below 109, I think we have a shot, maybe another four or five percent to the downside. All righty. Let's see. The next one I'm going to give you is L I T E Lumentum. All right. Light. Oh, big gap down. Mm, don't like this one. I know it's coming back up, but it's coming back up on lighter volume. Uh, I don't even need all the relative charts. When I get a big gap down like this from $56 down to 44 and it just keeps selling off and it's on the heaviest volume on the chart, um, I don't have to be beaten over the head to see distribution. A lot of folks getting out. I think we're getting an oversold bounce back up. Anything close to that 44 level, I'd be a seller. Okay. Let's see the next one. We haven't looked at this one in a while. Um, TRXC, Transentrix. Yeah, that one last time we looked at was on fire up around six. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and it, this is another one of those, uh, you know, the poster child I was saying earlier about stocks that look good one month or two months and all of a sudden they fall apart. Um, what TRXC is doing is what you see across a lot of areas of the market. Um, they just go through these cycles. Maybe it's a, you know, their, their line of business is just in favor for a while, but you go from these really nice looking uptrends with great volume, great looking charts, and then all of a sudden they break down and can't catch a bid. And you have no idea why until the next earnings report comes out. Um, yeah, I don't like it right now with this downtrend in play. Um, and this was a stock that I know we talked about a couple months ago, and I probably loved it at the time because of, uh, you know, the technicals looking as strong as they did. But I think when you look at what's going on now, uh, look at what these bounces, where these bounces are failing. Uh, you know, I don't make this stuff up. Two of them, right up to that 20-day uh, moving average and then right back down again. Now, we had a lot of selling. We put in a reversing candle. And so that's going to be a key area if we move back down. So from a short-term perspective, if I was thinking about buying the stock, I'd either do it on a breakout above the 20-day with increasing volume, or I'd wait and see if I could get it all the way back down here to where the buyers last showed up, which was at about, I don't know, $2.65 or so. Okay. All right. Uh, next one, Community Health Systems, CYH. All right. It's in the healthcare providers group, but it's one of the worst stocks within the group. Here you can see healthcare providers, which has been strong. Here you can see CYH, which has been weak. And so as a result, on a relative basis, this is a stock that has been downtrending for months against the overall group. Now, on a relative basis, I probably would not be interested in this stock until it was to take out that relative high from right here. Um, until it starts to show that over, you know, if it can get to a four or five week, or excuse me, four or five month relative high versus its peers, then I would begin to look at it. And that would probably coincide with a breakout 
above this area. So off of this downtrend, we could have a left shoulder, neckline, uh, a head, right side of the neckline, right shoulder, nice breakout. That combined with a move through this relative uh, resistance area, I think would be the combination I'd be looking for. Until that happened, I would not be interested here. Okay. Next one, I know we've not looked at. Golar NLG Partners, and that would be GMLP. All right, GMLP, uh, another one downtrending. The group's been downtrending. Um, yeah, I'm not really seeing anything. Almost every one of these charts is going left to right, uh, higher to lower. So this is not the kind of configuration we want on these charts. So there's a lot of work to be done here on the chart. And if you take a look, um, you know, and I, I'm going to show you something that's uh, kind of similar to what I just showed you on one of the other charts. But when you start talking about these uh, huge, very, very heavy volume selling, here was one bar when we broke down below this area of support on this kind of volume. Notice where we failed. Look at that shooting star candle off that uptrend. That's what you want to look for as far if, if you're in a stock that's been beaten up and now it's coming back up, and you're getting all excited. You get a stock, you get a, a candle that looks like that at a major area of resistance, gap resistance where all the sellers were. I would not take any chances. I would get out and just let somebody else hold on to it or at least see if you can close back up above, say, $15.75 or $16, which it never did. So I think right now it's in a downtrend. I, here's your trading range. It's getting closer to support, but it's, you know, in a downtrend, support doesn't hold. Um, resistance holds. So I don't like it. I think there are a lot of other charts look a lot better than this one. I'll pass. Okay. The next one is going to be NSC, which is a railroad, Norfolk, Norfolk, Fork, <laughs> NSC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not going to even try anymore. <laughs> it's over. I'm not, now that you've gone there, I'm not going there either. Um, yeah, I mean, ra uh, railroads are one of the things that I'm watching very, very closely because th this was a, a group that was holding up really well into early October. And it's a, um, it's a proxy really for the U.S. economy. I mean, if you think about it, why would railroads go up unless it's transportation of goods within North America, unless things are picking up and the market's anticipating them picking up? So I think railroads are always a key area to watch in the market. And what I don't like on NSC is we've gotten up. We had chances to take out key resistance right there at about 173, 174. Look at that false breakout, what I was just talking about on another chart. Now, this chart looks a lot better than the one we just looked at. But when you get up to any key resistance area, and you have the breakout intraday and you can't hold it, that is normally not a good sign. And you can see the selling kicked in right after that. I would say at this point, that is going to be your key area. You've got this gap down here on heavy volume. The buyer stepped in. Maybe even go back to this gap support right here. But I'm going to say 153, 155 is your support. And right now, resistance is up around 173, 174. Okay, and we have one more left. American Tower Corp, our only real estate request, AMT. Yeah, AMT made a really nice run off of uh, a support area. This, it was right here. Actually, this was one of my setups a few weeks back. Uh, it came down and put this hammer right on the 20-day moving average after it had broken above all of this sideways consolidation. When you break out of a base, that tends to be a pretty good thing. And we continue moving up. I think this pullback to the 20-day represents another buying opportunity. Uh, overall, uh, I think the DJ USSR specialty REITs. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, the group has been strengthening of late. You can see on a relative basis, AMT has been a great performer relative to its peers, relative to the S&P. And you can see that its peers have actually just recently broken out above. Yeah, this is like a 2018 relative high. So real estate, we've talked about a lot on the show. A lot of money is rotated into that group. This is one way to play on the long side if you're worried about those high growth areas. This is a stock that's done uh, especially well. So as far as looking at it and annotating it, I think the key for me, at least in the near term, is continuing to see this stock hold on to its 20-day moving average, short term. Now, longer term, I mean, if it fails, at some point we'll have a, a negative divergence emerge and maybe we go down to the 50. 
But for now, I think we've got a nice uptrend in play. I think the 20-day holds. I like AMT. All right. And that is it. That is 10 stocks in about 10 minutes. I think you actually did pretty pretty good this time. We were pretty close. All right. Here are the symbols we did go over. Those charts that Tom just annotated will be in the Market Watchers live chart list for you to do with what you would like. Save it to your own chart list. Annotate it yourself. Uh, just go to the blogs tab. Click on the Market Watchers live blog and there you will have it right there, that link. All right. Time to get to our final market update. Let's go ahead and see what has been going on. All right. Oh, Cyber Monday. I forgot to have that. I have that up here for you guys to see. Yes, three free months if you if you uh, renew uh, for 12. So that's an excellent deal. And of course, if you um, renew for six months, then you're going to get one month free. If you are a new member or not a current member, uh, you can go in and just get your trial membership and then take advantage of this particular special. And it is only today. We do not offer it at all any other time. Once today is over, you cannot get it. So uh, go ahead and do that as soon as possible. If you want to find this page, just go and you'll find it at the top in the banners, the green banners. You'll see that link. So go and check it out. All right. Let's see what's going on here now in the market. Certainly a better day, but it looks like we're pulling back quite a bit from the highs we made earlier. And notice where they're coming in, at least for the Dow and for the S&P. They're coming in right here at the uh, price top we saw back on Wednesday. And it seems to be that once we hit that area, prices have started to move back down. Uh, not the best news, but we are still moving to, we are still on the upside as far as our major indexes go, uh, with most of them up uh, almost 1%. The NASDAQ is up 1.15% right now. Uh, it is doing the best of our major indexes besides the NASDAQ 100. Uh, OEX, uh, the S&P 100, mid caps, as well as the small caps all on the positive side right now with, uh, like I said, NASDAQ 100 still doing the best, uh, up over one and a quarter percent. We have uh, TSX, Canadian markets have now hit negative territory. We will have to see if that's where US markets will be eventually headed and going to. Treasury yields are up, but pulling back a little bit, currently reading 3.066. UUP is up right now, uh, one penny, reading 25.88. Gold is down with GLD down almost 20 cents at 115.58. And TLT bonds are down slightly today, down 17 cents currently, reading just under 115 at 114.97. And USO, you know, it's up on the day by a, a percentage point, but you can see there is a lot of damage that has been done uh, just in Friday's move to the downside. And I'll be talking more about oil shortly in the decision point report. There's a lot of uh, not so great news there going on in the oil area. So that's all I had for my portion of the market update. Uh, Tom, I'm going to pass it to you and get ready for that decision point report. All right. Sounds good. I just want to take one quick look at the Russell 2000. This is small caps. I've talked a lot about small caps heading into December. It is by far the best month of the year for small caps. This is the first of the major indices to go back up through the 50 hour moving average. We spent almost the, well, most of the second half, at least of November below that 50 hour moving average as we continue to drift lower. We did get back up above it. Now we're kind of churning. I would watch these two areas on uh, small caps. I think if we go back down, especially below today's uh, low, uh, down around that 1489 level, I would be very concerned about, uh, about the Russell 2000, about the overall market in general. But this is an area I'd look for support. So uh, really, uh, we'll see how we close out the month. But things are started off on a pretty good note, Aaron, but uh, we pulled back and uh, a sell off this afternoon I would not be a good thing. Yes, I would not want to see that as well. And, you know, I was looking at the sectors and which ones are leading. And right now it's those aggressive sectors that are leading uh, to the upside as far as we're as far as uh, what we're seeing currently. And that's, of course, good news uh, to see more of the aggressive sectors near the top. But yeah, if we start to fail, that's certainly not a good sign. 
All right, time for the decision point report. Let's go ahead and move right on in. All right, so today we have the decision point report for November 26th, um, Monday. I do wanna let everybody know big announcement, uh, soft sell announcement here, but we will be starting a program on Fridays called the Decision Point Report. Some of you may remember it from before. So we will be moving the Decision Point Report segment into its own show on Friday afternoon. So you won't be getting this information quite so stale as it is right now on a Monday uh, when we have all this information on Friday afternoons. So you'll wanna tune in uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern on Friday and you will get the new Decision Point Report show. So be sure and uh, take a look at that. And I will have the full half hour. I won't have to, to put it all into 15 minutes. So it'll be a lot more uh, detail there for you as well. All right, so let's get started. What we will be doing today is I'm gonna look at the weekly charts and some of the daily charts as well for the large cap, uh, mid and small cap indexes. And then I will be talking about the big four, dollar, gold, oil, and bonds. Uh, then I will go ahead and take a look at our decision point indicators, uh, our short, short term Swenland trading oscillators and our intermediate term ITBM and ITBM. Where I wanna start though is the decision the decision point scoreboards. And these were the signals that came in last week. We were already starting to see quite a bit of weakness here as far as the short term. We already had these short term uh, sell signals that had come in already for trend, uh, really having a, a big problem there. You can see really when you look at the NASDAQ 100, that particular short term trend model neutral signal came in at the beginning of October. So we had a little bit of warning here when you look at the intermediate term signals and when they came in in October, there was certainly some warning uh, signs before we started our way down. But what I wanted to note, especially right now, is the fact that our short term momentum on the large cap uh, scoreboard indexes is now in the, the negative territory. So if you look, the only green right now that we do have are long-term signals. And uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. Uh, most of these long-term PMOs on the monthly charts have given us sell signals, but we don't log them until the end of the last trading day of the month, which will happen to be on Friday, November 30th. So the very first decision point report show will be going over not only daily and weekly charts, but we'll also be covering the monthly charts and the likely new PMO cell signals that are showing up there. And I am gonna show you a very interesting chart shortly as far as uh, bear market goes uh, and how that is concerned. But let's go ahead and move on in to looking at our charts. All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna start up here with the Dow Industrials. And like I said, I'm gonna move on through daily and weeklies. Uh, the main thing I wanted to point out on the daily charts for the large cap indexes are these October lows that currently are holding. And I believe the NASDAQ is the only one that uh, isn't doing that, but we'll go ahead and look at that separately. But most of our large cap indexes have held these October lows. Uh, which do tend to coincide with June lows that we saw as well. So seeing price not even have to go down and test that area, I think is a positive. Uh, but I'm, I'm with uh, Tom. If we close uh, on the negative side today after such a great open, uh, I would be looking for more downside, possibly that move to test that June low at 24,000 for the Dow. All right, I'm gonna show you the daily chart from the NASDAQ because I wanna show you the difference here before we get into weeklies. And as you can see, the October low did not hold for the NASDAQ, but we did get the bounce and we're now above that uh, 6550 area, uh, which is where that previous low was. Uh, you know, and I, I think that we could still certainly see it move lower to the downside. Uh, it's important to see what happens as far as the rally having come back up above the October low here for the NASDAQ 100. I'm gonna be watching closely. You have a PMO that really wants to turn up. Uh, this would be a great opportunity 
for the tech stocks to start making that move and hopefully bring the rest of the market out of the doldrums that we're seeing right now. You can see though, 50 day EMA about ready to cross below the 200 day EMA on the NASDAQ 100. And that would give us a long-term trend model sell signal. So not only could we lose the monthly PMO signal to a sell, which is lined up right now. Like I said, it will go final if it is still there on Friday afternoon after the markets close. But you know, if we see not only this intermediate, or I'm sorry, long-term PMO sell signal, you add that on top of a 5,200 day EMA negative crossover, which is a long-term trend model sell signal, there are a lot of problems out there. And uh, I will tell you that having spent Thanksgiving with Carl Swenlin, my dad, uh, we did talk about the market a little bit and uh, we are both, uh, well, he's definitely on the bear market side. I'm pretty much on the bear market side. I don't, I, I will be uh, thoroughly convinced uh, like you, Tom, if we get down here and break down below those uh, earlier 2018 lows. Uh, but right now we're losing a very uh, important long-term rising trend line. It's holding up so far, but if we lose that, uh, we should go down and test those lows. But I'm very concerned about bear market situations here. And you can see just with these PMO sell signals in the intermediate term, uh, this is a big problem because typically when you get these, uh, you're gonna see a breakdown at least in the intermediate term. Now, I know Tom, you're gonna point this out and others probably watching. You know, we did get these sell signals back here and they didn't turn out to be much of a problem after all. We had mostly sideways consolidation, but notice we never got a buy signal either. Uh, and that's when we started to see things really take, you know, move lower uh, as far as the weekly chart. And then of course this 2017 uh, sell signal really didn't uh, stick around very long. And, you know, we obviously saw prices move higher, but what I want you to see, I believe it's this one that I have, nope, it's the S&P one. And I'm gonna give you the monthly chart. I know this is the weekly, but I really wanted to show you how important it is when we see these uh, long-term uh, PMO sell signals and like I said, those are all lined up on all four of the scoreboard indexes. They will likely go final on Friday. And what typically hap happens on a monthly chart when you get a long-term PMO sell signal? Uh, generally not anything good. Uh, generally, generally you're gonna see a bear market or you're gonna see uh, deep, deep corrections. So I think we're pretty, I mean, this one's pretty close to, you just don't see too many that didn't pan out here. I'd say this back here, dot coms, you know, 93 going into 94, we still ended up with a rise out of that particular sell signal uh, that came in, but we're still looking at, you know, it eventually led to consolidation and you could see a little bit of a pullback there. So just wanted a heads up here because on Friday, and like I said, I'll be talking more about this on Friday when they go final, but that's something to definitely pay attention to. All right, I'm gonna look at weekly charts for the mid caps and the small caps. Uh, the main thing I want you to note is that, you know, we actually went down and tested those 2018 lows on IJH or the mid caps and survived. Uh, you know, we started to move back up and it held this uh, long-term rising trend line uh, granted, it's only drawn off of these two lows, but it's still, um, I would say, valid. This one would be a little bit more valid, uh, but they both have, you know, the two to connect those lows. Um, so I'm watching the this channel here between those two. And, you know, I know we've, we've dropped below this other rising trend channel. So, you know, just just keep uh, keep vigilant. I think we could certainly go down and test these lows from 2018 once again. And this big red arrow is pointing to a big problem. Uh, we do see that the weekly uh, EMAs, the 17 and 40 week, are now having a negative crossover. This didn't come in on the weekly chart on Friday, so I'm I'm not reporting that really as a crossover. Uh, but on Friday, I suspect we're going to see that. Uh, highly doubtful that we're going to end up with price above that 43-week EMA anytime soon. 
in IWM, short term here. And I drew similar rising bottoms trend lines. And you can see that uh, we're, we're getting, uh, it's holding right now. And again, I, I mean, this is, you can connect just about any kind of trend line you want. Um, you know, you can make them interior, you can make them however you want. Uh, this one I wanted to draw off that low. And when I brought it up to the price lows that we saw um, earlier in October uh, and matched those up uh, with the later October lows, you can see right here in the thumbnail, uh, it did end up with a pretty nice rising trend line. I am more concerned though about these lows again back in 2018. Uh, we did come down very close to testing those on the Russell 2000, but uh, not quite there. Uh, hopefully we'll hold this rising bottoms trend line, uh, but look, we have the PMO sell signal on the weekly chart. I mean, it's not looking too healthy at this point as far as the weekly chart goes for the Russell 2000. I think there's some possibilities on the daily chart for the Russell 2000. First of all, you can see a PMO buy signal after a um, you know a whipsaw buy after a sell signal we got last week. Uh, we do see the 5200 day EMA negative crossover, but we could be looking at a double bottom configuration. Of course, we were looking at a possible reverse head and shoulders, if you remember, with this being the left shoulder, this being the head, and we were watching it come down here, and we were waiting to see if we'd get that uh, bottom, and we never did. But it looks like we might have uh, a, a double bottom, which is a bullish pattern. So keep an eye on that. All right, real quick through the indicators, and then we're going to close up with looking at the dollar, gold, oil, and bonds on those weekly charts. Uh, Short-term indicators, not a whole lot here, except to say that they are below the zero line, and currently they're moving mostly sideways. So they're not giving us a lot of information on where to expect uh, this low here to resolve, either to the up or the downside. They're just the short-term indicators are well, pretty much not helpful right now. And as far as the intermediate term indicators go, these are very worrisome and do suggest a move down to that $2,600 level or 2,600 point level for the S&P 500. We have negative crossover on the ITVM and we have one uh, lining up right now on the ITBM. So, you know, finding the volume one failing before the, the breadth one is always a big concern as well because that typically means we're not getting the volume uh, to support the move as far as these indicators are concerned. So I don't like to see that. Um, intermediate terms still looking pretty ugly. All right, let's quickly go through our dollar gold oil and bonds weekly charts. Uh, I'll move it to a daily if I find something very interesting there. But at this point, uh, UUP, we're hanging in there. I would say everything is still looking bullish. Uh, when you do look at that weekly chart, or the daily chart for for the dollar, we're hanging into the hanging in a rising uh, trend channel. I think we're going to hold on to that. Right now, you can see we're trading above what was uh, you know somewhat resistance here. I would say at that uh, October top back here, we have broken above that. I'm expecting a move to test the top side of this rising trend channel. You can see a PMO that's turned up. As far as gold, looking at the weekly chart here. You know, gold, again, has been poised for so long to do well. I mean, the indicators have been lining up. I mean, we've got this PMO buy signal. We have very bearish. Uh, we had lots of bearish sentiment going on here. All of these things are bullish, and all of these things should have uh, given us a nice price rise. And what did we get? Not, well, not one. Uh, we've been moving mostly sideways. So, you know, gold is just... It should be good, and if we continue lower, I would expect gold to perform well, but it just, even with really good setups, it just hasn't been performing like I'd wanna see. Currently holding 1220 uh, for support, but 1240 has, has posed uh, serious resistance, hasn't been able to get above it, and look at the PMO right now. It is topping, trying to top below this, the uh, signal line, which is also very negative. I would point out though that we are seeing um, gold decoupling from the dollar in a longer term uh, way on the 50 day average. And that means that they can travel together. So I am bullish on the dollar and in the intermediate term, I could still be bullish on gold and I am. I just, 
I'm just not super bullish because I just don't see uh, overhead resistance uh, being broken at this point. There's just nothing out there showing me something that good. All right, oil, USO, as far as the weekly chart, we may have found an area for support here at that 1050, 1075 level you can see here in the uh, thumbnail. But notice this PMO on the weekly chart, just, I mean, it couldn't be going down much faster. It continues to accelerate lower. You have a 1743 week ne uh, negative crossover lining up right now. Uh, pretty ugly for oil. I think there's a lot of downside pressure. I'm not expecting USO or oil to do that well. Uh, if we do get a little bit of a rebound, I'd look for that 1150 area uh, to be a possibility, but really looking at, at everything on this chart, nothing looks very good. I'm, I'm still uh, very bearish on oil. And as far as bonds go, I remain bearish. Uh, although there are some signs that we could be seeing something coming out of bonds. But right now that the uh, head and shoulders pattern I think is still valid on the TLT weekly chart. Uh, if we do get a breakout above this rising bottoms trend line, which also is uh, the neckline, for this particular pattern. If we break out above that, then I will uh, probably consider at, the, at that point that this pattern has uh, not uh, executed properly and it would be, um, I'd probably throw it out. All right, and that pretty much completes the uh, decision point weekly report. Uh, let me go ahead and, and I'm gonna show you quickly the uh, summary slides, if I can get there. Yeah, no worries. Let's just uh, move on. I know we're about ready to close the show. I will have my summary slides uh, listed for you in the Market Watchers Live. Um, here we go. Uh, I'll have those in the Market Watchers Live recap so you can see where I'm standing on all of the things I just talked to you about. But whew, now you can see why in the heck I, I need my own show on Fridays <laughs> so I can do this stuff without rushing. Yep, you'll have a full 30 minutes and congratulations on that for sure. Thank you. All right, uh, we do want to talk Cyber Monday because we only got a little over a minute left. Uh, we brought up a poll here. 40% of you have said that you have not taken advantage. I tell you what, I don't know why. This, <laughs> I know. this is the best deal of the year. I think, you know, Aaron and I with our shows every day and all of the other stock charts, TV shows that you see and uh, all of the information that's shared with all of the guests that come on. I mean, I, I think we show on a regular basis the power of being a member at Stock Charts. And today is the best day to sign up. Uh, yes. As and it is the time. only day. Uh, yep. Yeah. I mean, they, there is no uh, extension. So you need to get in there and do that uh, Cyber Monday special right away. Yep. And if you're not a member currently and you want to become, you know, you want to take out that free trial, you can do that, but you still need to sign up for this special today. So become a, a free member, uh, you know, get that one month free trial and then sign up for this. And by far the best deal is to, to sign up for the year because you'll get three free months. Uh, so 15 months for the price of 12. You're not going to beat that anytime during the year. I know we've harped on this a lot and talked about it a lot during the show, but I tell you what, it is the best deal of the year. And we want to make sure every all of you take advantage of it uh, before the time expires. Excellent. Okay. Uh, well, that is another show, another week underway. Yes. The market, you know, I see financials, consumer discretionary, consumer services doing pretty well today. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I think that that was, you know, that's a positive if we close higher and you know, to see those sectors doing well. Yeah, I think that's going to be the key. I mean, you know, a lot of times in a, I'm not going to say bear market because I'm not saying bear market just yet, but when you're in a downtrend, you see morning strength, afternoon weakness, and we want to be careful um, later today and throughout the week. I'd like to see some buying late in the day, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, there you have the schedule. I want to thank everybody for being with us today. Again, last time, Cyber Monday, make sure you take advantage of that. Um, and remember to complete the survey as you exit. We do love to get your feedback. As a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Happy trading.